Hello, my name is David Coletta, and I'm the senior leader at Mission Community Church. Before you begin watching the Sermon of the Week, allow me to pray that you might encounter God right there where you are. Father, I ask that your spirit will be present right where people are watching this video. May they be receptive to the voice of your spirit as they watch in Jesus' name, amen. From all of us at MCC, may God bless you as you watch this week's message. for our families I speak the holy name Jesus let's do it together
is a day of celebration. How about that? You say, you say, why is today a day of celebration? Well, every day is a day of celebration. God is good and Jesus is alive. We got to celebrate, you know. Uh, and I've been thinking today about Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know, he wants to give you the desires of your heart today, but it all starts with delighting in him. But also there's a few more things to celebrate. I don't know if you want to celebrate this, but I'm celebrating. You might not have realized it, but this month is the two-year anniversary of the reboot of the new Mission Community Church. Two, two years ago, uh, not to bring up painful things, but that's what the message kind of is about, ouch. It starts with the ouch. You know, you know, we all want to be overcomers, but we don't like the ouch part. You know, but every good overcomer story starts with an ouch. Have you ever noticed that? Well, anyway, two years ago, the pastor had resigned. The entire staff, other than David, had resigned, and not only resigned, had left the church. There was no worship team. There was no sound crew or tech crew. There was no kids ministry. There was no hospitality team. Otherwise, we were doing great. <laughs> and I forgot to mention that over half the people had left the church. So, two years. We're a toddler. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? How many of you have had toddlers? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a great thing, but it's, we're a healthy toddler. Uh, but isn't that, that's a fantastic thing. But also, I, I want to say too, here's another reason to celebrate. This message is a Labor Day message. Now, no, not the American kind of labor, like, you know, labor unions working, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Labor and delivery kind of message. How about that? Because our message today starts with the labor and delivery of the hero of the story. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever had a baby, it's painful. And in the Bible days, there were no cesareans. There were no epidurals. Uh, there's no whatever. You know, it was just labor and delivery. There was pain. And I believe for some of you today, God is getting ready to birth some exciting things in your life. But in the meantime you got to go through some labor, some delivery. And Jesus even said the whole last days would be characterized by birth pangs. Wow, that's kind of rough. Birth pangs are kind of challenging. Hey, but there's a good ending. There's a good outcome. There's a good result. And we can celebrate. Isn't that fantastic? Well, the character in our story went from ouch to overcomer. And uh, yeah, of course, I had to bring some props, you know, to, to, to illustrate the story. So a baby was born. But right from day one, the baby's mother called the baby ouch. Now you might have heard it called Jabez. That's kind of the Hebrew version. But it basically was ouch. And so there's this O that was put on this baby, was branded from day one, and even as, as the baby became a man, here he is. So he still had the O. And, and, and that's kind of rough, you know, kind of an ugly story, guys, isn't it? But, but, but the interesting thing is, don't feel too sorry about this guy, because the O went from ouch to overcomer. And, and look at this. One of the things I, I find amazing about Jabez, about this guy named Ouch, is that he stood out. See that? Look at that. Here's all these people. They all look the same. Blah, 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 blah. And here's Jabez. He stood out. You know what? There is a spirit out in the land that wants everybody to be the same. Wants everybody to fit in, everybody to be politically correct. We all have to think the same, be the same, can't stand out, can't do anything. That is of the devil. That is of the devil because we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be salt and light. We're supposed to, to, to and we might be like a sore thumb, but we're supposed to be like this. But we're supposed to be like Jabez. 
And it's interesting as you read the as you read the uh, the chapter here. This is in First Chronicles chapter four. It starts with all these. It starts with all these genealogies. And what do you notice about all these guys? If we had time, I'd read them, but except I can't pronounce a lot of the names. The descendants of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal, and Rhea, and Shobal, and da 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 And it just goes on and on. And then after that, it goes on another one. Uh, the dis- Oops, here we go. The descendants of Hur goes on and on and on. And guess what? What do you notice about that? It has nothing to say about these people. And in the, the first nine chapters of First Chronicles, it lists probably like a couple hundred people. I haven't bothered to, to count them all. And for most of them, there's nothing to say about them. I don't want to live a life like that. I want to make a difference. And, 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 and I think a lot of us are kind of like this guy, Charlie. He was born in 1950, he died in 2022, and in between, there's this dash. Look at that. But unfortunately for Charlie, there's nothing to say about him. He lived, he died, and nobody cared, nobody noticed. Anyway. I don't want to be too hard on Charlie, but anyway, he just, <laughs> sorry, Charlie, <laughs> you know. <sighs> you know, there's almost 8 billion people in the world today, and God loves every single one of them, and everyone matters to God. They really do. They really do matter to God. But unfortunately, of the 8 billion people in the world, many of them just live and die. There's not much going on with the, the dash in the middle. And so here we are, we have this genealogy of these people that don't seem to have a life that really made much of a difference. And then all of a sudden there's Jabez <laughs> in verse 9. And, and it's incredible that, that he stands out of, of the crowd. And here's a mystery I want you to think about. Here's a mystery. Why did Jabez stand out? There's all these other people. This person begat this person. This person begat that person. All these people lived and died and whatever. And all of a sudden there's Jabez. What was different about him? Why was he different? Was he smarter? Was he more intelligent, better educated, had a better upbringing? What was different about Jabez? And the interesting thing, it was really none of those things. And in a few minutes, or I'm going to divulge the mystery of why Jabez was so different. But let me read the passage. It's just two verses. I could be here till dinner time tonight just talking about these two verses. It's incredible. But look, look at these verses here. Here we go. Verse 9 and 10. We can get Joe's thing to work here. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. <laughs> You know, the interesting thing, just about every baby was born in pain. (laughs) There's nothing notable about that. (laughs) But Jabez cried to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be on me and keep me from harm, that I would be free from pain. And God granted his request. And then I put dot, dot, dot there. You see that dot, dot, dot? You know what that means? That means it goes right back to the genealogies. (laughs) Here's Jabez, and then, okay, here's some more genealogies. Well, what does it mean? Let's look at these things one by one. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now, that's an interesting thing. We live in a day when you're not supposed to exceed. You're not supposed to be ambitious. You're not supposed to have any pride. Everybody's supposed to be the same. It's kind of a socialistic kind of mindset. We're all supposed to make the same money, do the same things, think the same way. Jabez was more honorable. Now, that might offend some of you, but he was more honorable. Now, the interesting thing, it didn't say he was more talented. It didn't say he was smarter. It just says he was more honorable. That's a character kind of quality. Isn't that something? Over in New Zealand where my daughter Abby lives, and in Australia too, there's this thing called the tall poppy syndrome. Any of you ever heard of the tall poppy syndrome? 
The idea is, have you ever bought some flowers at Harris Teeter or, or Publix or someplace, and you know one of the flowers kind of too high? Well, you have to cut it down. They're all supposed to be the same. Well, that's the way they are in, in a lot of other countries, the tall poppy stream. You're not supposed to stand out. Get down. Be like everybody else. That's a lie of the devil, okay? You're not supposed to be like everybody else. You're supposed to be like Jabez. Well, anyway, I'm getting fired up about it. He was more honorable than his brothers. Isn't, isn't that something? There's 43 verses in this chapter, and all of a sudden, in these two verses, he stands out. Wow, it's something. You know, it says in our Constitution, all men are cre created equal. But that's not true as far as characteristics go. I mean, yeah, we should all be equal as far as our rights, under the Constitution, all that kind of stuff. But I can't play basketball like Steph Curry or Michael Jordan. I can't play football like, like Tom Brady. We're not equal. There's some people that are more honorable. And, and I want to call your attention. I just think there's a word that God wants to highlight. I know it's just insignificant in this verse. But the word more, 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 more. Just say that with me. More, more, more. That's one of the characteristics that made J Jabez stand out. He was more, more. How many of you are satisfied with what you are now and, and what you have now? There should be a cry of our hearts that says, more, Lord, more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your love, more passion for souls, more, Lord, more. God, help us. We need more. Wow, isn't that something? Well, look at this. So many powerful things in this, this passage. His mother had named him Jabez. Ouch, in other words. Out, uh, Jabez meant one who causes pain. <laughs> one who causes sorrow or suffering. What, what a name. What, what, a, what, a, you know, what a label you know, to put on somebody. Ouch. What do you notice about that? Anybody notice anything? Where's the father? It's okay for the mom to give him a name. I don't, I'm not necessarily against that. There's no mention of his father. Do you know one of the greatest tragedies in our country today? Absentee fathers. I don't know much about Jabez's father, but it doesn't sound like he was real involved. I don't know what happened to him. And that's why so many homes are messed up. So many kids are messed up, getting in trouble with, with, with all kind of crime and drugs and stuff like that. Where's the father? And if you're a father today, that is a high calling. And God wants you to be deeply involved and, and set the tone and, and be a covering for your kids, your family, your wife, your, your family. Where's the father? His mother named him Jabez. His mother. Oh, God. Bless her, his mother. But then look at this. I keep losing my clicker. That's, that's rough. Here we go. Look at this. This is a insignificant I. I, 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 I gave birth to him in pain. Do you know what? I can't, I can't totally fault the mother. She was just passing on what she had, what she received. And that's what tends to happen. I. I, I. And so instead of thinking of the other person, instead of thinking of our kids, instead of thinking of the people around the world, it's I, I, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I'm going to pass that on. I'm going to pass that label on. You know, I, it gives me even mercy for the Pharisees. The Pharisees were judgmental, legalistic, and everything. They were just passing on how they saw God and what they were receiving from God. So if you don't receive mercy and grace, and you don't see the mercy and grace of God, you won't pass it on. Jabez's mother was in pain, and she passed on the pain that she had to her son. Wow, what, a, what, a, what an interesting thing it was. So <laughs> she called him pain. Do, do you know, um, we tend to get our identity from our parents, from our siblings, from the people closest to us. Our identity. You know, there's a lot of identity theft going on today. How about that? 
I don't mean the identity theft where they steal your credit card. I mean where the devil tries to, to distort your identity. I remember as a kid, we used to go to carnivals and they had the House of Mirrors. Do you remember those? The House of Mirrors is quite a thing. You know, if you were skinny, it would make you look fat. If you were fat, it would make you look skinny. If you were short, it would make you look tall. It distorted everything. I think a lot of us, that's how we see ourselves. We see ourselves with distorted lenses, with distorted mirrors. The Bible says we're supposed to see ourselves in the light of the mirror of God's word. We're supposed to see ourselves as he sees us. We're supposed to see ourselves based on the voice from heaven that says, you're my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You're my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. And those words were spoken to Jesus because the father knew that in his ministry, lots of people were going to say, hey, you, you cast out demons by the, the prince of demons. You know, you're, 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 you're a lie, you're a cheat, you're this or you're that. Even his brothers didn't believe in him. Unless we hear the voice from heaven, the voices around us, the mirrors around us are going to distort the whole thing. Are any of you with me? You understand what I'm saying here today? I gave birth to him in pain. And the reality is, Hurt people hurt people. And Jabez's mother was a hurt person. And so she hurt Jabez. So if you've been hurt by your parents, have mercy. They were hurt themselves. You know, <laughs> we all have labels. You know, I, I bought, uh, bought some of these on Amazon this week. You know, whole, I bought a whole bag of it. If we, if we had time, we'd go through and we'd look at, you know, different letters and everything. Forrest Gump's one of my favorite movies. You know, he, he had this S on him. It said stupid, right? <laughs> so everywhere he went, they said, are you stupid? And what did he say? Anybody remember? Stupid yeah, stupid is, stupid does. That's what my mama told me. <laughs> but he had a label he had to deal with. He had to live down. We all have labels, and the labels are lies most of the time. Lies, lies of the devil that have to be replaced with the truth of what God says about us. Wow. What kind of labels have you received, huh? And the lies can become so severe that they're even demonic. The, de the demons come in and they play upon those things that people have labeled us with. It's, it's a rough thing. I remember one of the very first labels I ever had. It happened when I was in preschool. You know, teachers can have an impact on us too, for good or for bad. And I was in preschool, and the teacher sent a note home to my mom and said, Jimmy is a really nice boy, but he's too free with his hands. What does that, what does that, what does that mean? And if I were older and able to defend myself, I would have said, hey, I'm one-fourth Italian. That's how we talk. It's incredible. And sometimes the labels we have are subliminal. People don't even have to say anything. I was like 15 or 16. It, this is kind of painful. I'm sorry. I was 15 or 16. For the first time in my life, I was trying to kiss this girl. And she pushed me away, and she scrunched up her face like, Ugh. if you were the last guy, she didn't say it, but you could just tell. She didn't have to say a word. If you were the last guy on earth, I would not kiss you. That still hurts. That was over 50 years ago. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts. Well, help us, Lord. We all have things that we have to deal with, right? <laughs> help us, Lord. So, but what are you going to do? What's going to happen if, if you have some pain? You know, the, the interesting thing, the interesting thing, if you have pain, what do most people do when they have pain? They medicate it. What do they medicate it with? Alcohol, drugs, pornography, and other sexual things. Well, those are pretty obvious. But some of us medicate it with food. How about that? You know, comfort food. You heard of that? You know, medicate. I got some pain. I'm going to medicate my pain. I'm going to the Golden Corral today, you know. Um, and, and hey, it's football season. We can medicate it with sports, with video games, the Netflix binge. Shopping. How about that one? 
you know, I'm in some pain. <laughs> I'm going to go to Target. You know, <laughs> it's, there's different ways to medicate it. But the interesting thing about Jabez, he did not medicate his pain in any of those ways. He medicated his pain or he dealt with his pain by crying out to God. Isn't that something? He cried out to God. If there's some pain in your life or some difficulty in your life today, that's what you got to do. And, and the interesting thing for many of us too, even if we don't go comfort food or shopping binge or whatever, we look to people. Now, praise God for community. Praise God for people. We love you. We care about you. you know, this church is full of people that love you and care about you. But it's interesting. There's only so much that people can do for you. You got to cry out to God. And that's what Jabez said. He cried out to God. Wow. 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 And there's some interesting things here. He cried out to the God of Israel. Well, that's interesting. There's two different sides of that. One side of it is there were a lot of other gods back then. There's a lot of other gods today. People are looking to various gods and Eastern religions and this and that and all kind of different things. Different idols were back then. There's Baal and the Asherah and, and uh, Molech. And, you know, there's all kind of other gods. He cried out to the God of Israel. And you know what? When you're in pain and things aren't going so well, it's easy to say, yeah, you know, I was brought up as a Christian, brought up with the Bible, but, you know, I got to find something else. It's just not working for me. But even in the midst of his pain, Jabez cried to the God of Israel, the God of his fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isn't that something? And there's another really cool, amazing thing here. I think it's significant. The God of Israel can mean the God of the nation of Israel, but you know what I really think he meant? I think he was thinking of the God who, you know where the name Israel came from? It came from Jacob wrestling with God, and God changed his name. Remember that? Genesis chapter 32. J Jacob, the supplanter, the deceiver, the scoundrel, the guy that was always trying to you know, scheme his way into things. Here he is one night, dark, by himself, and he's wrestling with God, and he says, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. We're going to get to that in a second. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And God changed his name. I think Jabez said, my hero is Jacob. Because he's the one who cried out to the God of Israel to bless him and to change his name. Oh. Jeez. How many of you need God to change some things, you know? And, and, and it's, it's interesting that Jacob, he grabbed a hold. He said, I'm not going to let go unless you bless me. Wow. Well, <laughs> one of the reasons I, I've always been reluctant to preach in this passage because people say, well, that's just the prosperity gospel. You know, it's just the pro bless me, bless me, bless me. And I get it. Okay, look, I've tried the prosperity gospel. I've tried the poverty gospel. I like the prosperity gospel better. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand i realize that sometimes the prosperity gospel has been twisted has been perverted and we forget a lot of things like genesis 12 2 god said to abram he said i want to bless you and i want to make you a blessing we forget that part of the prosperity gospel god wants to bless you i can say it unashamedly god wants to bless you but I can also challenge you. God wants to bless you so you'll be a blessing. He doesn't want to just fill your cup. He wants it to run over and bless other people. How about that? Psalm 67, if you have some time, read that. And, and it says, God bless us so that your name would be known to the whole earth and your salvation to the ends of the earth. He wants to bless you so that other people would be challenged. Wow. And you know, 3 John uh, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, he says, I want you to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. And that's another thing that's left out sometimes of the prosperity gospel. How's your soul doing today? You know, how's your soul doing today? We think to be blessed is to have a 
bigger house and a nicer car and a bigger 401k and all that's really great stuff. But I know a lot of people that have big houses, nice cars, 401ks, and they're depressed, suicidal, and divorced because their soul wasn't prospering. They missed an important key. The real prosperity gospel wants you to prosper in every area of your life. Wow. And that brings us to a little, uh, little. oh, how did that slide get in there? <laughs> in about another month, we're starting Prime, our discipleship model. But see, it, it's about prosperity in the right sense of the word. Real prosperity means you have prayer, a relationship with God. You have relationships, healthy relationships with other people, right? Vertical line, horizontal line. And then it begins to morph into a tree, and that's instruction, connection to truth. And then the tree begins to have fruit, and that's, that's maturity, connection to character. And then there's a river that runs by this tree, and that's outreach, that's engagement, it's, it's making an impact in other people's lives. And if you have all five of those things, you will have a truly, truly, truly blessed life. How about that? Sign up for Prime, indeed. Wow. And then he, the next thing he says here in verse 10, he says, enlarge my territory. And again, in our carnal minds and our self-centered things, we say, well, that just means we're going to have a bigger lot, you know, a uh, bigger lot for our house. We're going to have a, a bigger boat. What? No, enlarge our territory. It's interesting that the whole Bible, some, someday, Robert, I'm going to write a book called Increase because it's a, it's a theme throughout the Bible. Increase. Increase. From Genesis chapter 1, he said he made them male and female, and he said, go forth and multiply and fill the earth. God wants people to increase and, and grow and expand. Jesus told all these parables about the kingdom, and they're all about increase. The parable of the sower, the parable of the leaven, um, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the talents. He got mad at the guy that didn't increase. God wants there to be increase. How about you? Are you ready to increase today? Are you ready to say, Lord, enlarge my territory, enlarge my influence? Oh, Father, I think, why, why did God like Jabez so much? Because many of the things that Jabez was praying were in line with God's purposes and his priorities. Isaiah 9, 7 says, of the increase of Jesus' government, there will be no end. It will increase. Man, I love it. Let it be. Well, verse 10. Verse 10 says, let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. This is the last verse in this section. Uh, well, we're going to, one, there's a little bit more on verse 10, but it's, it, it's kind of wor working its way to the end of this section. Let your hand be on me. What's that really mean? I think it means the hand of God's supernatural favor and blessing. God's hand. And you know what I think? And this is really, this gets to why Jabez was different than all these other people just in the genealogy. They might have, some of them I think were probably good people. They were people that probably believed in God, probably tried to serve God. But Jabez realized, I'm never going to be what God wants me to be. I'm never going to fulfill the purpose of God in my generation unless I have his help, unless his hand is upon me, unless something supernatural happens in my life. I cannot do it. There's an old uh, song from Elevation, I'm not enough unless you come, Lord. Will you meet me here again, Lord? We, we need his hand upon us. You know, <laughs> the other people might have relied on their own strength and intelligence, but Jabez realized, I need the hand of God. You know, as I was preparing for the message, I began to be troubled. I said, well, where's Jesus in this message? And where's the cross in this message? And where's the Holy Spirit in this message? But as I looked at it, I began to see Jabez had some similarities to Jesus. Jesus was a man of sorrows and a cranial with grief. Jesus took the pain on himself, and other people were healed and helped and blessed and saved. Wow, isn't that something? 
Jesus was all about increase, the increase of his kingdom. And then the cross, you know, think about the cross. You don't need the cross if you're perfect, but you need the cross if you're a misfit, if you fall short, if you're in pain, if you're in trouble. We need the cross because we can't do it ourselves. We fall short of the glory of God. And the cross shows us of God's love so that even if everybody else thought we were a pain, God says in the cross, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And the Holy Spirit, wow, it's not just about human effort. It's about the Holy Spirit, wow. The translators really don't know how to fully translate this verse, and I, I, I like the other translation better, like New King James. It, it says this last thing, he says, keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. The, the other translation is, so that I won't cause pain. And I think what Jabez realized here is, I got this terrible letter that has been stuck on me. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to pass it on to my kids and my grandkids. And it's going to go on and on and on and on. It's going to go on to my, my, the people around me, my wife, my, this, this ouch, this pain. It's going to keep getting passed on. And, and he's crying out that he would be healed. He wouldn't be in pain. But he's crying out so that I won't cause pain. I don't want to cause pain. Because pain has been imparted to me, but I'm not, I don't want to pass it on. One of my favorite verses in the Bible this week is 1 Peter 1.18. It says, we've been redeemed from the feudal way of life inherited from our forefathers. And that means it's got to stop here. Whatever negative stuff has been given to us, whatever things happen, whatever school teachers said bad things about us or parents that said bad things or siblings said bad things, it's going to stop here. It's not, I'm not going to pass it on. I've been redeemed. <laughs> wow, isn't that good? Aren't you glad about that? We don't need to pass it on. We don't need to pass it on. So G Jabez realized his need. Do you realize your need today? You know, I mean, some of us say, well, I'm not in pain. I, this message doesn't apply to me. I don't care if you're in pain or not, but we need the power of God because we need to go up higher and have a greater impact. Wow, help us, Lord. And, and here's an interesting thing, too. It, the passage ends with this. God granted his request. Now, I, isn't that something? But, but I would have thought that God would have argued. He would say, well, you do these 10 things and blah, 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 and go to school and do this and get some mentoring, and, and then I'll answer your request. It doesn't say. It just says God said, okay. There's just something about that. You didn't have to twist God's arm. Sometimes we think, i got to twist God's arm. Oh, God, please. Oh, pretty please. Please with sugar on top. No. He, he just said yes. God said yes. Look, look, look at the conversation that Jabez had with God. He says, Lord, bless me. God said, okay. Lord, enlarge my territory. Okay. Lord, put your hand of supernatural favor in my life. Okay. <laughs> Lord, heal me so I won't do harm to myself or others. Okay, sure. And I, I, I added a little line here. I picture the Lord saying, okay, is, is there any, this is fun. This is kind of cool. You know, is there anything else you want? <laughs> Isn't that something? That's the kind of God we have. Tell me your request. Let your request be known to God, it says in Philippians 4, 6. Let your request be known. Why don't we have more conversations like this? Why don't we have more conversations like this? Why do we think we got to twist God's arm when we're asking the very stuff that he wants to do in our life? So what, you know, the question is this, what is your biggest prayer request today? What kind of conversation do you need to have with God today? Well, anyway, well, let me close with this. The story of Nan. You know, I love Bible stories. I'm a Bible teacher. I love Bible stories. But you know what? It's kind of good if there's a modern day story. <laughs> you know, God's done some modern day stuff. How, don't you agree? I mean, I love the healings in the Bible, but I want to see some today. I, I love it when people in the Bible were set free from demons. I want to see it today. I, I want to see some people today that, that, that mirror the kind of principles that happened to Jabez. And then I thought of this story. 
Nan was this person in my brother's church. My brother's a pastor in Ohio. And uh, she has a, quite a story. She was born of immigrant parents, didn't have very much money growing up, but she was hardworking and smart and beautiful. She was the drum major in the drill team or marching band. She graduated with straight A's. She, uh, she became a singer in the big band era. Some of you young people probably have no idea what the big band era is. Do a Google search. <laughs> the big band era, you know, they, there's a singer out there. There's all this band band. Nan was a singer like that in some of the biggest ballrooms in Columbus, Ohio. She was amazing. And then she became a legal secretary by day and a singer by night. And that was really pretty amazing for somebody in the 1940s, you know. She accomplished a lot. Well... She met a handsome attorney named James, got married, had a couple kids, and it wasn't a very happy marriage. James tended to be kind of uh, verbally abusive. You'll never learn. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. And Nan, who had always been a great achiever and successful and everybody loved her, all that stuff, her self-image went down and down and down. It just wasn't very good. But she hung in there. And finally, after 36 years of marriage, she found out that James was having an affair with his secretary for several years, and he refused to give up that relationship. Nan was devastated. She hadn't worked in 36 years. She'd given her life to her husband and her kids. What are you going to do? She's in her 60s. Her husband has rejected her. What do you do when you're in pain, huh? She, she, she could have turned, you know, to alcohol, drugs, and all the other stuff on the list, but she didn't. <laughs> she ended up pouring her life into my brother's church. No, she wasn't a preacher. She wasn't a prophet. She wasn't a board member. You know what she was? She was a greeter. We would call it the hospitality team. How about that? But she was an amazing greeter, an amazing hospitality team person. Somebody would come in the door and say, hey, how are you doing, John? And he'd say, oh, I'm okay. John, come over here. What's going on? And she'd be praying for him out in the corner. And, and, and she'd be talking to Mary. Mary, what's, what's going on with you? Why don't you come over to, to my, my house and have some tea and, and we'll pray together uh, this coming week. Uh, how about that? And then uh, she'd notice if people didn't show up for a couple of weeks and she'd call them, hey, I haven't seen you. Sally, what's going on with you? I haven't seen you. You know, I miss you. And, and she'd write notes to people, encouragement notes. You know, that's a lost art, isn't it? You know, encouragement notes to people. That was before texting and emails and stuff. She, she, she would write these handwritten encouragement notes and send them out to people just to encourage them in the Lord. Well, anyway, make a long story short, Nan had seemingly routine surgery, age 71, which happens to be how old I am. Ugh. She went in for the surgery, was under anesthetic. She never came out. She died, went to be with the Lord. Well, she had a, they had a memorial service for her. They had to borrow another church because my brother's church wasn't large enough. They had about 500 people came, came to Nan's memorial service. And they had like an open mic and people would come up and stand in line to say, the reason I'm still with the Lord is because of Nan. The reason I'm still at, at the church is because Nan encouraged me. The reason I'm still with my, my husband or whatever, it was because of Nan. Nan encouraged me. And she wrote a note to me. She called me. She encouraged me. All these people were impacted by Nan. And then the point of the matter is, the point of the matter is Nan, Nan, uh, she, she stood out in the crowd. She made a difference. She made a difference, and she turned her pain into purpose. She turned her pain into purpose. Isn't that something? God, God wants us to make a difference. Well, I, I forgot to tell you about Nan. Uh, Nan was my mom, 
And, and perhaps you wonder whatever happened to that handsome attorney and his secretary. That's, I think, the most amazing part of the story. Because God redeemed that situation too. And he was glorified. He was honored in the remaining decades of their life as they cried out to God, the God of Jacob, the God of healing, the God of restoration. Wow. Help us, Lord. What's your situation today? What kind of thing needs to be restored, redeemed? You know, one of the... Uh, there's a slide that got missing from, from the, the Jabez presentation. You know what happened? They named the city after him. First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55. They're, they're, they named a city Jabez. How about that? Wouldn't that be something? If they named Charlotte after all these years, they named it Mission City, Jesus City. How about that? He wants us to make an impact like that. He, let me tell you one more thing about Jabez. I learned this from Wikipedia. How about that? Reliable source. Jabez started a ministry school, had 31 disciples. They studied scripture and prayed, and it said that they were overshadowed by the spirit of prophecy. Wow, the word and the spirit. Out of the pain came purpose. Thank you, Father. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, I, I trust there's, there's uh, situations today that need to be restored, redeemed. Uh, thank you, Lord. As Emily said earlier, what's the, the most amazing thing that we could pray today? Father, I pray that you would uh, stir our hearts to believe you for big things. We would cry out with passion as Jabez did. Lord, do it, Lord. Bless us. Redeem us, Lord. We need your hand upon us, Lord God. We need your spirit, Lord. We thank you for the cross. Without the cross, we couldn't have done it. Lord God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you want to enlarge our territory, but you want to give us our requests, Lord, today, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you for watching the Sermon of the Week. We pray that you were blessed by it and you felt prompted to act upon what the Spirit of God was saying to you. If you live in the Charlotte area, we would love for you to come and worship with us at one of our weekend gatherings. That way you can find out more about our church family and what we value most. We encourage you also to give to our ministry so that we might continue spreading the gospel of Jesus to our city and throughout the world. To do so, you simply go to missioncommunity.cc, click on the Give button, and the rest is simple. Lastly, I would encourage you to check out the remaining content on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. That way you will receive all of the reminders for fresh content that we put out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. May God bless you and thank you again for watching this week's message.